halogenation and halohydrin formation. Here we take an alkene plus a halogen, like Br2, and we get a dibromoalkane. Note here that when we take trans-2-butene, shown at the left, and we react it with bromine in CCl4, we get meso-2,3-dibromobutane. This means anti-addition. In other words, one of the bromine atoms added above the plane of the alkene and the other one added below. The one that's on the wedge added above the plane. The one that's on the dash below. So what will the stereochemical outcome look like when you start with the cisalkene? So remember, this is anti-addition. One of our bromines adds above the plane, and the other one adds below. But we can add above on the left and below on the right, as I just showed, or we can make its enantiomer below on the left and above on the right. Neither of these are meso. In fact, if we do 180 degree rotation around the bond, like so, we will see that we have this. A pair of enantiomers. So let's look at the mechanism for anti-addition and why we see the outcomes we do. So we know that if we treat an alkene with bromine and carbon tetrachloride, we will get the trans 1,2-dibromoalkane and its enantiomer. This also works with chlorine and iodine. So don't forget that. But let's go into the mechanism of why it happens. To elucidate the mechanism, I've drawn out the bromine molecule as a Lewis structure. Now we get three curved arrows. First, the pi bond acts as a nucleophile and does nucleophilic attack on one of the bromine atoms. The other bromine atom leaves, and the first bromine atom does back attack at the pi bond. The result is this cyclic three-membered ring with the bromine with the positive one charge and its enantiomer. In other words, the attack could have happened below the plane of the ring as well. But this is similar to the cyclic three-membered intermediate we get with oxymercuration demercuration and we call it a bromonium. If we had done it with chlorine, it would be a chloronium ion. We also generated a bromide ion. Now the bromide ion can do nucleophilic attack at one of these ring carbons and cause the ring to open. That's SN2, nucleophilic attack and loss of a leaving group. And it has to attack from the opposite side that would yield this outcome. Now, if we had the enantiomer plus bromide, that would yield this outcome.
know this mechanism for the test. Now, you may have noticed I've made a big deal out of saying that carbon tetrachloride is the solvent. What happens if you use water or something else that's nucleophilic? instead of CCL4. Well, then you get what's called a halohydrin, which has a halogen in one position and then a hydroxyl group added anti in the adjacent position where the pi bond was in your alkene. So now look here. I've got one methyl, one cyclohexene. There's a difference in substitution. My alkene is tri-substituted. So, this brings up the question of regiochemistry. Does the hydroxyl end up on the more substituted position of what was the alkene, or does it end up on the less substituted position? Let's look at the mechanism to find out. Just as before, we have three curved arrows. There's nucleophilic attack, loss of a leaving group, and back attack. And the outcome of this first step is the bromonium cation. Notice here we've got the um, bromine atom added above the plane of the alkene, so the methyl group ended up on a dash. We also would get the enantiomer where the bromine added below, and so the two bonds going to bromine would be dashes and the methyl would be on the wedge. But here is where it gets different. Since water is our solvent, the concentration of water is much, much greater than the concentration of bromide. In other words, the halohydrin is much more likely to react with a water molecule than a bromide ion. Furthermore, where is the water going to attack? Well, it's going to attack at the ring position that has more positive charge character. And that is the more substituted ring position. So our second mechanistic step is nucleophilic attack here and ring opening here. So then we end up with this protonated alcohol. And another water molecule can do proton transfer to deprotonate it. And it's very clear that we only end up with the first product and not the second. In other words, when the halohydrin forms, the hydroxyl is always attached to the more substituted position.